too long, beloved. It's a word. I know it's been a long time. And life has us going in many directions. And I'm just here to share some of the things Yah has brought to me. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Many people, when we read scripture and it says we are made in his image, in his image made he us male and female in his image. People who think from a worldly standpoint of images, they think in terms of just the facial structure, the body structure. No. We're talking spirit, mind, and body, all three. The spirit of Yah is a creator. We as his children are creators. So if you're getting visions, if you're getting ideas of things you want to create, things that you want to transform, the creator in you, that spirit, that image of the creator is coming out in you. If physically you are not fit the way you want to be fit, some of us may be too thin, some of us may be too big to our own liking. We are talking about transformational creativity, beloved. These images that we carry, this image of our creator that is within us, gives us vision vision to create, be it from a spiritual standpoint and a physical and a mental, it's transformational. Where there was little to none, now there is a whole lot of some with abundance, abundance on it. The quantity, he can take one and make a multitude. It is in us the same way. There are some people that were born an only child, and yet that one and only child may have had six, seven children who in turn had multiple children, and they've got more children in their family than a household with five children born in their time. Creator, spirit, mind, body. We have the ability, it doesn't matter how old you are, if you don't like your physique, you can transform yourself to creator. He even showed us through Yeshua HaMashiach. When he was walking the earth after his death and resurrection, he was not the same. He was not the same. And many times when he walked amongst people, they did not recognize us him many of us have that transformational quality in us although we will find opposition we will find friends families co-workers neighbors people who just saw us that they oh you trying to get new no i'm made in the image of my father i am constantly renewing myself you can't help it where there is no vision the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. What law? The law of truth, the law of the creator, the law the creator gave us. And the truth, not coming from a physical carnal people trying to explain the truth of who Yah is and who we are. That vision, beloved. We are walking around, watching all these changes in the world, watching his word come to pass. We know the end of all things in this system is coming to pass. Many of us long for it. We want that transformation to come about. We are tired of this fetid, rotted system that doesn't care about anybody. It honors Memohan, it honors money, it is a love of money. How do we know? We watch that Titan, that ship everybody's talking about with millionaires and billionaires on board. We watch millions of dollars spent from around the world in an emergency rescue attempt 
for people who were foolish with their own lives. They were foolish. When you look in the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 12, verse 13, let me get to it. Verse 13. Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent or any such as come nigh wild, wild beasts? What's that mean? Who will pity a charmer? I'm, I'm trying to, yeah. Who will pity a charmer? that is bitten with a serpent or any such as come now wild beast. What does that mean? You take your own life and its safety and its security for granted. You play with this precious life that Yahuwah has given us. Who will pity such? Mm. So I don't celebrate anybody's demise. I never gave life. A life came through me through my children, but I don't create life. However, we're looking at a system that is spiritually corrupt. Corrupt. We are looking at a system that spent millions of dollars in effort to save five people who really were like a snake charmer. They were bitten by the serpent or like someone that comes near to wild beast, you played with death. Who pities such? You played with death. But because we're dealing with spiritual forces, I'm trying to find it because I don't, I know the quote well. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. We watch powers coming from multiple principalities, earthly and spiritual, against rulers of the darkness of this world, come against, against spiritual wickedness in high places. They took the people's money to save people who had no honor for their own lives. And yet we also saw this Greek migrant boat wreck that in the Mediterranean considered one of the worst boating tragedies in history. One of the worst. Over 700 men, women, and children go down into the ocean. 600 assumed dead. And very little is said. Spiritual wickedness and high places. We all see it. We see it. And the average person who does have a spiritual eye sees it. But you see, it goes deeper than that. Everybody keeps talking about the Titanic. The Titanic. You, you, if you remember the story of the Titanic, if you remember the story now they try to hide it because you realize they try to control the narrative. But some people say it was the captain. Some say it was the creator of the Titanic, Ishmael, that said he put a curse on it with his mouth. The man who said God cannot sink the Titanic. God cannot sink the Titanic. Or as others rephrase it, not even God can sink her. It's a curse. It's a curse, beloved. And that ship, that ship that sank in a place, they cannot recover it. They cannot recover it. But what did Yah tell us? You have foolish people doing foolish things. What did Yah tell us if, if it's cursed? We look in the book of Joshua. Let me get the chapter for you, beloved. Chapter 6, verse 18. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves a curse when ye take of the accursed thing. Why would you go and visit a watery graveyard. And the thing, the history, the story of it is, I've listened to many people talk about they believe the boat was sabotaged and there were a lot of rich people and there were other rich people that gained even more power and riches by those rich people on board dying. But it was cursed. Yes, it was. It was cursed. 
Yah told us. He told those who listen. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed when ye take of the accursed thing. You're going to something that was cursed. We don't know if the people heard what was said. I know when you dishonor God, I don't want no parts of it. This is what this thing that you didn't put a curse on this thing. I'm leaving. Uh-uh. You didn't dishonor God. You didn't dishonor Yahuwah. There is another story. There is a story. I remember when the singer Prince. He was expecting his firstborn child. I don't know which show I saw the interview on. It was a long, long time ago. But his wife, Mai Tai, or whatever her name was, was pregnant. He said that child would be more beautiful than Yahweh. I remember. And I knew then. You, you, didn't, you didn't put a curse on this child. We are taught. There are certain things you do not do when you're pregnant. You do not say when you're pregnant. Because you can mark that child. Prince said it in an interview. This child won't be more beautiful than God. I was like, that child is doomed, doomed. Then the baby was born. Then the baby was born. He had something called Pfeiffer syndrome. Okay, he had something called Pfeiffer syndrome. I was trying to find it. Uh, it's in here and it describes Pfeiffer syndrome causes skeletal and systemic abnormalities, including the fusing of skull bones, resulting in addition, a, a condition called clover leaf skull in which the eyes are outside of the sockets, as well as the fusion of the bones in the hands and feet, creating a web paw-like appearance. When Prince saw the baby when he saw this baby, trying to find it when he saw that baby born. He recoiled in horror, terror, okay? This is his ex-wife. They named the baby Amir. He was delivered via C-section, October 16th, 1996. And at first, the couple were overjoyed. I don't know how to describe the look on my husband's face. Pure joy, she writes. That's his ex-wife. And then they held the baby up to those lights, to those harsh lights. The elation on my husband's face turned to pure terror. And then they go on to describe Pfeiffer syndrome. It is such a rare condition, but you see, we are made in God's image. We are made in his image, beloved. And you see, some of us, many of us, when we listen to how this world teaches us things, we end up believing because we're inundated with it. That's why we need that image. It keeps our mind clear. Your mind can be muddled. Start reading your word. Watch the clarity come back. We're made in his image. That's food for us. Man shall not live by bread alone. Some of us are walking around off balance and don't know why. Because you need that spiritual food to cleanse you. The Ruach, it's a, the spirit of counsel, come to you. That spirit will lead you and guide you. Many of you, as I stated in the beginning, are running around with a lot of visions. He's deposited those visions in us for a reason. Whether it's a vision of something you want to create, something you want to revitalize and restore. Maybe you want to remake yourself. Well, I'm too old. No, this is the right time. When you read the book of Moses, Moses was 80 years old. 80 years old when y'all finally grabbed him. He was 80. Even when he died, his strength had not abated, nor had his eyes grown dim from getting old. You can look at the Ruach Gavora, the spirit of might. 
if his strength had not abated, it had not weakened in his old age. The, the Ruach of Vora, the spirit of might, many of us are walking around with the spirit of might. Yes, we are. Why? Because we're made in the image of our father. And you see the world will tell us sometimes, you're just supposed to be neat and sweet and kind and, and just a nice little treat. Let me tell you something. My brother, Yeshua HaMashiach, when them people was up in our father's house trying to turn it into a marketplace, he took a cord and beat everybody out of that place. You got to understand, beloved, we're made in his image with a sound mind, a sound body. And if it's not sound, you have the ability to transform yourself. Even when Yahuwah puts a seed in us, that seed has the ability to not only grow into a multitude of fruits, but it has the seed within the fruit itself to continue growing. So that one seed can change the landscape. Long after your earthly vessel is gone, your great, great, great grandchildren will still be eating the fruit of what you did. <clears throat> A people without vision perish. How do they perish? Because you may be that one that's supposed to go and start something. I don't care how old you are. It doesn't matter how much money you don't have. Well, everybody says I can't, but y'all say yes and amen. This word, beloved, this word, there is... We are made in his image. Not just this. Because Yah is a spirit and looks for those who worship him in spirit and in truth. He's a spirit. So we know the spirit within us has the creativity of our father. So whatever you want to change and transform, don't give up. Don't feel bad. Don't feel slow because you're older, because you're poorer, because everybody went against you. Everybody is saying, no, don't take but one yes from the creator to turn that thing around. This is a word for you, beloved, to be encouraged. The times you can tell, he sped up the time. So his chosen, would be able to make it out because if he did not even his chosen would be left. Let the vision speak, beloved. Let the vision speak. It is for an appointed time and it shall surely come to pass. All you have to do is believe. It's a word, beloved. Shalom.